you know, I'm a gearhead. I've been uh, working with cars ever since I was eight, nine years old. There's no other occupation that I would have ever wanted. When you have these cars and you work on them so long, you know, there's a lot of heartaches that go into, you know, it isn't always smooth when you're working on it. The ultimate thing is when you're driving it down the road and, it, and it's moving and it's stopping and uh, that's a high you can't replace with drugs. You know, I mean, and this is a drug, I guess, you know. Today, everybody's uh, more in a hurry than they were back then. We didn't have things to be in a hurry, you know. My name is Pete Gentile. I drive a 55 Chevrolet. It's an ex-drag race car, and I have a 1955 Ford convertible that I'm in the process of uh, rebuilding, making a mild custom car out of it. My brother worked in the gas station. When they were bleeding brakes back then, they would put me in the car and hoist me up and tell me to press and hold and release, and I knew right then I was kind of hooked. After I got out of high school, I went to work at uh, Fisher Body Willow Run, uh, where we made the Corvairs, and I worked in Ford Motor Company as, a, as an engine builder for prototype engines. They would bring me engineers that were out of college, and they would have me teach them what part of the engine, this is this, this does this, because all they had was book theory. They didn't have any of the, the knowledge of, uh, of, uh, you know, of the automobile and what it did. But I've done numerous cars in my adult life. I would buy, like, uh, Thunderbirds, some of the fancier cars that were either burned or stripped. And I would take, and take them all apart and rebuild them, you know, and sell them. And uh, they were just as good as they were the day they came out of the assembly line, you know, when they got done with them. People that were buying uh, new cars that were damaged, you know, and they wouldn't take them to a collision shop. They'd bring them to me and and have me uh, put them back together for them, and I would take and uh, do it the way the, the car should have been done, and the customers were always happy with what I did. You know, I'd work my eight hours, I'd come home, and uh, uh, I would eat dinner, and I would usually had a project out in the garage, and I would go out there, and I would work on there until around 10 o'clock or 10.30, somewhere around there, and then uh, go in and take a shower, get ready, go up, the next day and go back to work and I did that for uh, for some time. I worked in the gas station part-time. I knew the owner, he would line up work for me. I'd come home, I'd eat dinner and I'd go to the gas station and I would do his tune-ups and his brake jobs and stuff like that that he had lined up. You could build a guy a real good engine and uh, he really didn't see what he was getting but when you seen the finished product of the car uh, that you did a, a good job of uh, doing the body work and paint work and the car looked nice and straight. It was uh, more fulfilling for me. I got into the hot rodding thing because the hot rodding thing was more a blue collar type uh, of a hobby. People were building cars that had a personality to them. You could tell, you know, that they took a lot of time when they completed a car. It looked really nice. I bought the car from a, from a friend of mine that uh, he was going to go drag racing with it. It was just a, just a bare, bare body with, uh, with four wheels on it. And I says, well, I says, if you want to sell it, uh, let me know. And he says, well, just give me what I got in it. And I think at the time I gave him $400 for the car. And I took it home and then I started doing the initial work on the car to, to get it to put an engine in, to get it running. The name of the car is Injecticide. One of the young kids that worked for us he was in the uh, horse racing, and he come in one day and he says, I got the, uh, the name for the car, you know. And he says, Injecticide. And I says, Injecticide, what's that? He says, well, you got the Hillborn fuel injection on it. And some horse that was racing in Detroit at one of the horse tracks on the east side of town, I believe, we had the car lettered by Paul Hatton, which was a pretty famous striper, letter type guy, and in fact, uh, he was doing other work for Ford Motor Company, and then uh, when he came out with the Mustang in 1964, he did all of the hand striping on all of the Mustangs that were sold that year, so he, that's when he finally went full-time into what he was doing. 
At the time I had a garage and a gas station, I felt that if I had a car, you know, with a name on it and the car was a fairly good runner, that I could make money installing, doing engine work and things like that for other people, which proved out to be a pretty good mix that we were doing this. It was fairly competitive and for not being sponsored like a lot of them were sponsored, that were able to put more money in it. You know, I was feeding a wife and two kids and, and working and I ran from uh, oh, 1965 to 1972. The end of 71 was the last year I ran uh, Detroit Dragway and Myland, uh, Motor City on the other side of town, and then in Windsor, Canada. Them were the four primary tracks. This car ran uh, 1177 at 119 mile an hour, which was uh, a tenth and a half off of the national record. In 72, NHRA changed the rules and I decided to stop racing along with many, many other people. I took and parked the car in a chicken coop. It sat in a chicken coop for many years. It doesn't have the Hillborn injection on it now. It has a supercharger, a GMC uh, 671, detuned to about 600 horsepower right now, but it's capable of probably 750 uh, with more carburation and more camshaft. I just cruise in the car. I don't, I don't drive the car fast. I take grandkids, take them up to the Dairy Queen, take them to the cruise, take them for a ride. It drives very well on the street, never gives me any problems, doesn't overheat. In fact, it runs a little bit on the cool side. I had overheating problems with it originally and uh, it took me a year or so to, to work through them. When you're going down the road and you have people that are tooting the horns, taking video of the car. You can't replace that. I've had guys that they'll walk right out in front of the car and stop me and say, is this the same car that raced at Windsor Dragway back in the 60s? And you say, yeah. And the guy says, you made my day. I had this 1955 Ford. I was 18 years old. I bought it out of a scrapyard. It had a blown motor in it. I teamed up with a friend of mine that was a trimmer. We worked one winter and we did a, a padded top on the car. I put a, a 322 cubic inch Ford motor with dual quads on it and it was, uh, it was souped up quite a bit. At 21, I got married and I got activated in the National Guard during the uh, Cuban Missile Crisis. So uh, I took the car and uh, uh, dropped it off at the Alexander Brothers, which were the uh, Eastern Division of Barris. And they were doing some work to the back end of the car. I was gone for a year and when I came back and I picked the car up, you know, I was married. I needed a home to live in, my wife was expecting. So the car kind of took a back seat. One of the kids that used to come in all the time, he was bugging me about the car. And uh, at the time, I didn't think the car had any value to it. So I signed the title over to him. He was going to fix the car. It ended up that he didn't do any of that. He left it on a side street in front of his house. I didn't know about it, and I hadn't seen the guy in a while. So I had a policeman friend come and tell me that he thinks that my car is in, a, uh, is in the pond. I said, well, can I see it? He says, yeah, he says, I'll take you over there. He took me over there and it was in the middle of about 50 other cars, so it had been there quite a while. I didn't have the money to, to get the car out of the pond and I didn't have a place to put it. And the car eventually was sent to the scrap yard and cubed and that was the end of the car. After that, it was uh, always in the back of my mind that I would like to uh, to do another car and try to complete the job that I had started on it. At one point I was, I was looking and uh, there was an article in there that was featuring Alexander Brothers cars that they, uh, that they had completed. I was scrolling and you know I seen some of the cars and I said, well, I, says, I don't have enough time to, uh, to sit and go through all of them. So I went back, I was gonna get out and I said, well, I'm gonna go back. And the first picture that I came to 
was a picture of my car sitting in front of the Alexander Brothers shop. And I said, wow, that's incredible. I says, you know, I've just been kicking myself all these years and all of a sudden uh, here's, here's a picture of it. So then I contacted the individual that had the uh, had posted the picture and he says he thinks he knows where these books might be. The next day when I opened my mail, there were pictures of the, the magazine cover and the articles from one of the magazines. And uh, I couldn't hardly believe it. And I'm saying, my stars are starting to fall in line here. I gotta get busy. So I located one and it was in uh, Owensville, Missouri. The car wasn't as good as he said it was. So we renegotiated the price and I brought the car home. And since then I've taken the car apart and it's worse than anybody would have thought. If they had left it setting in the water for 15 years, it probably would have been in better shape than being out of the water and the air get at the, at the metal, you know, and that's what helps the, uh, the rust start. The car was pretty much in the two pieces, the front half and the back half of the car. They were just hanging together. The main goal is to get that Ford in one piece so it can be lifted off of the frame and I can do the framework and then finish the, the work on the body and, and do the paint work on it and reassemble it and then uh, work on getting the interior, getting all of the chrome re on it because it's all pitted. The car pretty much is, is gonna be uh, like a new car, you know, or like a new 55 Ford convertible that will have some modifications done to it. Back then, uh, I could work eight or 10 or 12 hours on a car and maybe even more, if, you know, depending on what it was. But now with, uh, with the back issue that I have, uh, about four or five hours is uh, equivalent to about 12 hours of what I used to do before. I had thought it would be about two years, two and a half years, but uh, I think it may still be another two year before I'm done with the car. No, I'm, I'm not regretting it, not at all. I just hope I live long enough to finish it.